one can become the other in a flash. As long as these weapons are in the world, there is a distinct risk that they will be used. Tonight, the horror of chemical and biological weapons a global problem with very personal consequences. My eyes were hurting. My sinuses were bothering me. I have short-term memory loss. I get tired relatively easy. Those are two of the puzzlements to the doctors. The doctors in the anthrax attacks were mostly getting their information from television. The history of these weapons includes stories you know and stories hidden by time sometimes hidden on purpose. They simply grew fleas by the billions, infected them with plague, and then dropped them over Chinese cities. Each one of those artillery tubes contains enough nerve gas to kill 80 to 100,000 people. Terrorist dream could be smuggled out of there, could be stolen, could be sold by insiders. The threat isn't just dying by them, it's also living with them. You've got to go through very carefully and figure out where the drip is, and the hope is that the leak doesn't hit any live human being, because if it does, it'll kill them immediately. This series is the context and perspective behind today's frenzy of news. It's a compelling framework of personal stories that will illuminate how we live with these weapons, weapons that are designed to kill on a massive scale. You have ultimate zealotry and ultimate weapons. There couldn't be a more dangerous combination. How will the lessons of history and the threats of today persuade us to secure our future? The clock's ticking. The worst case is doing nothing. It is our future and our choice. In our lifetimes, we have witnessed both amazing achievement and unimagined destruction. We've seen human genius cure disease, release the power of the atom, and design computers that connect the planet. But we have also seen our genius turned against us on battlefields and in laboratories, in our most advanced cities and impoverished nations. We have experienced the very worst of human capability a capability that many feel confronts us with nothing less than Armageddon. Armageddon, of course, is not a new idea. It dates back to the book of Revelation, the forces of good and evil arrayed against each other in the final battle. But now we truly do have the capacity to destroy each other and ourselves. Weapons of mass destruction are part of this story as terrorists and rogue regimes around the globe try to obtain them. Where once it took powerful nations and sophisticated laboratories to produce and deploy the awesome power of these weapons, their availability now seems to be widespread. So, how can we avoid the 21st century version of Armageddon? This week, we present a series of four programs, documentary exploration and timely discussion to follow, which examine those very questions. How humanity answers them will help determine our future. This is what avoiding Armageddon is all about. A spring day in 1995, the trains and stations full of commuters. Suddenly chaos people collapsing. There was panic and death. Terror in Tokyo. The work of a group called Am Shinrikyo. It was the first time the world saw a chemical attack like this. Urban terrorists unleashing a killer gas, a weapon of mass destruction. My eyes were hurting. My sinuses were bothering me, and I was feeling very weak by that time. But I thought it was just my allergy symptoms, and I didn't connect the two. The authorities first thought a natural gas explosion. I have no idea what happened. My eyes hurt. I'm about to pass out. In fact, the people here had been attacked with the nerve gas sarin. Shisue Takahashi's husband worked for the subway system. He was just doing his job. 
My husband removed a sarin soaked package from the subway train to the platform. And then he cleaned the sarin stains on the platform. During this cleaning, he fainted. That was what I was told. My sister called me about the attack. I rushed to the hospital. When I got there, my husband's body was cold on the bed. Mr. Takahashi died within 10 minutes of his exposure to sarin. That's how fast sarin will kill if it's inhaled. It can also be absorbed through the skin. It can lodge in the eyes. Without immediate medical attention, sarin victims suffer convulsions, coma, and cardiac arrest. Sarin exposure can be treated by injection with atropine, but it must be done quickly. Within two hours of the attack, an obscure cult and its leader became the prime suspects. He was born Chizuo Matsumoto, and he dreamed of being Japan's prime minister. But he never made it through college, and in 1982, he was jailed for selling fake medicines. After his release, he changed his name to Shoko Asahara and created his own religion. By 1995, Asahara's Am Shinrikyo had attracted more than 40,000 followers in several countries, and the cult's assets were worth one and a half billion dollars. What's important is how we are going to use the donations. Our intention is to use them for a good cause. Asahara proclaimed himself savior. He built his cult on visions of an apocalypse and urged his followers to prepare for the world's final destruction from which they would emerge triumphant. To followers, his existence is beyond God. He's a superpower. So, he controls the whole universe. In actuality, he's just a psychopath. To carry out Asahara's vision, Am Shinrikyo sought weapons of mass destruction. They tried unsuccessfully to obtain nuclear weapons. If Asahara had the choice to simply hit the button to shoot an atomic bomb, like the button the President of the United States has to end the world, he would have done it. It's as simple as that. They tried to make biological weapons, but they had grave difficulty releasing them because it's hard to release biological weapons. Uh, then they turned to chemical weapons, several of them, but particularly sarin gas. Fortunately for the millions who ride Tokyo subways, the cult members mixed the sarin imperfectly. Otherwise, many more would have died. The delivery method was primitive. Five attackers dropped and then punctured 11 packages containing sarin in trains throughout the system. The gas spread to more than 15 stations. The idea was to release an enormous amount of sarin gas that would create a major catastrophe. And the Japanese would think that the Americans had released the gas. The Americans would think that the Japanese had released the gas. Other countries would join in World War III, which would in turn bring about a biblical Armageddon. Of course, that was fantasy. But it was fantasy backed up with building weapons of mass destruction. Twelve died. Four thousand more were sent to the hospital in the subway attack. More than 200 members of the cult were arrested. Ten were sentenced to death. Shoko Asahara is still on trial. Mrs. Takahashi still mourns her husband's death. The quiet widow of an assistant station master, she has become the leader of the relatives of the cult's victims, and she has attended the trials every day. In my life, nothing is the same anymore. The same with my children. It takes a long time to reestablish our life from that point. I used to think that Japan, including Tokyo, was a safe place. Such a safe place like Japan couldn't have sarin. 
I can't say that it's over in my life until I know that all of the assailants all of the assailants are punished by death. Yesterday it was Tokyo. Today it could be New York, San Francisco, London, Paris, Moscow, Washington. Terror cells have been broken up around the world since the attacks of 9-11. What we should learn out of Aum Shinrikyo is, all right, can they really do it? Aum Shinrikyo was you know, kind of like my idea of a nightmare of a terrorist group because not only did they have a leader who was pretty wacky you know, and determined to pursue these weapons, but they were very well financed. Om Shinrikyo were bent on joining in an Armageddon-like process in order to destroy the entire world for the purpose of spiritually renewing it. In that sense, what you have in your mind is not the feeling that you're a murderer, but rather you're carrying out a vision of the highest spiritual significance. And that was true of Om Shinrikyo. It can be true of certain suicide bombers or uh, certain Islamist fanatics. You have, as with Om Shinrikyo, a combination of ultimate zealotry and ultimate weapons. There couldn't be a more dangerous combination. <laughs> 